I have new Subaru details for you. We got pricing and packaging on the 2023 Impreza models. We also have an STI Forester coming. A couple bullet points on the Impreza. Still, all-wheel drive is standard. That's a beautiful thing because it only comes in roughly $20,000. We have standard Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, CVT. But here's the cool thing is that a lot of us forget because Impreza is like oftentimes overlooked compared to the sales of the Forester and the Outback, right? And also the, the hype and the buzz that the WRX generates. But the Impreza still comes not only with a hatchback, but it still comes with the option of a manual transmission. So the, un the only engine option that we have is a two liter Poxer four cylinder, 152 horsepower, 145 pound feet of torque. Now, of course you can get the linear tronic CVT, big whoop. I, of course that's gonna be the major seller, but there's nothing fun or exciting about it. It just gets the job done. Um, there is a seven speed manual mode with paddle shifters if you guys wanna try hard, you know big CVT energy, you know what I mean? Fuel prices are the way they are, seeing 36 miles per gallon and 450 miles of range. Fuel time, like recharge times of five minutes, guys, EVs, EVs are far from where they need to be for the average person. That range, good luck seeing that on EV. Why would I bring up EVs? Because Ionic 6 is supposed to come out tomorrow. Motor Trend leaked it and I have a whole video done on the leak, but Motor Trend pulled that article. So I can't really, I don't feel like if I want to be invited to Ionic events, I don't feel like I should be putting out pre-embargo materials. I don't, I haven't signed that, those materials away. I'm not under embargo, so I could have that video. Anyways, I can't share too much. I don't want to get myself on the blacklist. Let's just talk about the overall pricing because we're just going down to the bottom. Let's get, let's get straight into the nitty gritty here. So we have not only five speed manual on the base sedan, but you can get it on the base uh, five door. You can also get it on the sport trim five door, which would be my, my preference of choice here. 25 K all wheel drive hatchback practicality, five speed manual. Would it be nice if it was six speed manual manual? Absolutely. Uh, would it's not a performance car, but at least we got save the manuals here. Would it be nice if it had a small turbo 1.8 liter turbo, like we see on some vehicles in Japan and other parts of the world? Absolutely. But it is what it is. This is what keeps the price down, right? Interestingly, if we look at the codes here, sport gets 21, 21 is a standard sport level trim, but it doesn't get eyesight because eyesight is only available with the automatic CVT. Now on the CVT sport trim, it also gets 23, which gives you power moonroof, blind spot detection, Harman Kardon, etc. Now that just means it's an option on the CVT, but you don't have that sunroof at all on the sport model five speed manual, it looks like. And that is quite a bit of a bummer if you ask me. So if you had to car figures and break down the sales of the Impreza so far this year, this is sedan and hatchback combined, right? 3,000 units in January, went up to 35 unit, 3,500 units in February, and it's just been free fall. So Subaru is probably allocating those chips to more profitable models in the lineup, the Outback the Forester of name. Um, if we go down to yearly Impreza sales in the United States, yikes, hit a record in 2017. And now we're at the lowest point since 2011. Will it make a comeback? I just see no hope in sight for them to make a comeback. If we average out the sales, let's say 2,200 times 12 here, that gets us to 26,000 vehicles we're estimating to be sold here in the United States, which could be the lowest year in recorded history. 26,000 units is lower than in 2005 at 33. It's lower in 2011 at 28. So it will be interesting to see what the Impreza clocks in at the end of the year. I'm probably not gonna relook it up. It's their, one of the lowest volume sellers in their lineup, which it shouldn't be. This vehicle should be selling a ton of vehicles. It's in the same segment, guys, as the Corolla, as the Civic, and it has all wheel drive. There's no reason this vehicle shouldn't be selling super, super high volumes. Like Honda has no problem selling over 250,000 Civics. Mazda should be a little bit more of a direct competitor here because this vehicle, uh, well, this company is very small, like Subaru, and they're selling more. They're expected to sell more Mazda 3s this year than the Impreza, which the Mazda 3 is a better vehicle. 
I haven't driven in Impreza in a long time, but I feel like the Mazda 3 does have all-wheel drive. You have turbo variants, has a nicer interior, better styling overall, and you can still get in a hatchback. So the Mazda 3 is a better vehicle overall, but the Corolla has no problem selling about 250,000 units like the Civic. So moving away from the Impreza, we're going to head to Car Scoops. We have a Forester STI Sport. So Sport, it's more of just like a design cladding. There's no performance upgrades other than we do have some upgraded uh, suspension here. We have Hitachi Estemo SFRD front dampers tuned by the STI team alongside unique tuning for the rear dampers. Subaru is claiming that his handling is similar to a sports sedan. Now it doesn't get powertrain upgrades, but it does have a 1.8 liter four cylinder turbo with 175 horse and 221 pound feet. What we see in America is a two and a half liter naturally aspirated with like seven more horsepower than this engine, but way less torque. And fuel economy is actually really good on it. I was impressed with the fuel economy on my Forester Wilderness. Make sure to check out that video. That, that car crossover really surprised me. So we got some STI badges on the back. I mean, that's really what you're paying for. Some unique looks to it for sure. STI badge on the front. We have this Bordeaux trimmed Napa leather on the seats. A red shifter here, of course, because this is the more STI uh, focused model. But we're not going to see this here state sign. Like I mentioned, the Wilderness is attention. It's kind of like the America-fied version of our custom Forester. While well, Japan doesn't have that same sort of off-roading heritage or off-roading focus in the market right now, their market's always going to be a little bit more about sportiness, tunability, and just overall fun to drive on roads. Where in America, there's a lot more land off-road than on-road. So I'm going to end it there. Impreza, sales aren't great, but it's still an affordable all-wheel drive entry-level vehicle with a five-speed manual still available. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button. Also, if you haven't watched my Ascent refresh, especially the Onyx edition, make sure to check that out. Also, don't forget to stop back in about a week or so when I'm done reviewing the new WRX. Can't wait to share you my impressions with the six-speed manual, the new engine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm gonna end there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and peace out.